Welcome to the original rock and wrestling radio show. Welcome to Beyond Ringside, your source for wrestling, MMA, and boxing in the Southeast. To contact the Ringside Roundtable of Beyond Ringside, email them at beyondringside at gmail.com. And now, your host for Beyond Ringside, the man, no myth, all legend, Fast Eddie Lane. Greetings, good evening, how the heck are you? Going at eight minutes after the top of the hour. Welcome into the Magic City Online Studios in beautiful Birmingham, Alabama. Yours truly, Fast Eddie Lane on this side of the control panel, being joined by Mr. MCO Chase Pearson. What's happening, everybody? Hope y'all are doing good today and ready for a great show. Mark Mabo Bowman and the Wicked Nemesis both on the way into the studio as we speak. Phone lines are going to be open for a few minutes at 205-316-9900. And, of course, can always catch us via email at beyondringside at gmail.com. Coming up just after the top of the hour, professional wrestling legend Ox Baker will be joining us here on Beyond Ringside. Looking forward to that. It is going to be fun. Uh, got a number of topics we're going to hit real quick now. We just got off the phone with Mabo and Wick, and they are about one exit away from where we are right now at the MCO Studios. In other words, Wicked's driving like a bat out of hell. No surprise. No, no kidding. If he drives like he talks, oh, my God. That would put him right in the same league as all of us. Shh. <laughs> Man, I'm just glad to be here on Sunday afternoon. Man, I'm looking forward to a great show and a great pay-per-view tonight. So am I. Bragging rights from World Wrestling Entertainment going to be kicking off in just a few minutes. Absolutely. Uh, matter of fact, let's go ahead and start the ball rolling uh, real quick because we can go ahead and bring them up to speed during the first commercial break when they walk in the door, which they should be barreling through in about four minutes at the most. Um this past Monday on Monday Night Raw, and yeah, I'm, I'm digging straight into the uh, stand-up for WWE thing. This past Monday on Monday Night Raw, a campaign was started by World Wrestling Entertainment, stand-up for WWE, because of the negative attack campaigns put out by the Democratic machine up in the state of Connecticut where Linda McMahon is running for state senator. Now, I'm going to say this. I, I'm, I don't express my personal political views here on this show or any other show because they are my views and they stay that way. Same thing with religion. I have my religious views and they're going to stay that way. But by the same token, I did a chance to do a little, I had a chance to do a little research on some of the advertising that's been going out. Linda McMahon, true CEO at one time of World Wrestling Entertainment, has moved away from the company to make the move for political office. For the Democrats, who are her opposition, to try all this stuff to bring WWE programming. While she was CEO, this happened, this happened, this happened. Uh, so what? It's a television show, kids. If that's the fact of the matter, why are we not jumping all over the people who appear on Jon Stewart and The Daily Show or Stephen Colbert? Chase Pearson, come on in. Not only is it a TV show, and I tell you, on Beyond Ringside, I tend to pick on WWE from leaving the Attitude Era and moving into the PG crap. Right. But let's look at this. WWE is not only a television show, it is the most dominant television show in the world. It yep. is in every country on earth. Yep. And billions <laughs> watch this stuff. So, and not only that, I mean, you can see the inside of the ring and the, and the stuff they do and the shows and all that. But if you really want to find out more about really what WWE does, you should look at some of the things they do outside of the ring. Right. All of the charity events they do, I mean, they do Make a Wish Foundation. They are one of the largest. Yep benefactors for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Not only that, but you look at how their support for the military. Yes. They've been to multiple shows in Iraq and Afghanistan. Correct. Tribute and to the all this other stuff. And this person who that I've been instructed not to name, right? he does not want me up his... Wazoo. Yeah. Because <laughs> I want to tell you, I'm not a big Linda McMahon fan. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie. I don't like a lot of her politics. Even though she is conservative Republican. It's, it's, it's individual issues. I right. think personally, she is probably a very good person. Right. Though she's married to Vince McMahon. You know, so she's got some, she's got some, uh, issues. But at the same time, you, these people do not want the WWE universe all at their booties because it's coming. Well, see, therein lies the rub about the situation. The way that it was introduced to the fans of the World Wrestling Entertainment Organization, the WWE Universe, it really almost seemed like panhandling to a great degree. And I'm completely in – you've heard my commentary over the last few minutes. I'm completely and totally in favor of the premise behind stand-up for WWE because I'll do the same thing, and I don't have to be asked. I was doing this before the stand-up for WWE campaign got started. Come on in, guys. Um, Maybo, take this one quick. Slide in between, so to speak. Um, but the fact of the matter is, just the way oh, that we're it, doing pictures today. <laughs> Maybo, yeah. do me a favor. Do me a favor, Maybo. Make sure that don't hit the ground. Please. 
Because there's a yeah, Thank there's you, a sir. yeah, big big Just time. Put camera. it down on the desk. I'm you can sorry, tell we're guys. doing this live. No editing. We are live from the MCO studios. And and I'm having you, a great time with that. Yeah, the Oracle of Ominous Wicked Nemesis coming on board. Do it again. Hold. Wear your WWE shirts to the polls. Wear them to the polls. Wear there your you armbands, go. your hats. Bring your big old number ones, whatever you want to do. Exactly. You know, I dare them to do that because I'd have the police out there in a minute. What, to say something about it? it there's no there, Look, there's no legal reason that they can actually bar you from voting because of what you're wearing. Exactly. If they do that, it's not only a violation of state and federal laws, but it's a violation of your civil liberties and your civil rights. I'd have the cops out there in a minute with beat sticks beating them down like, I mean, you're so glad this is a PG show, PG show. Itchy face. Because I'm going to do, oh, oh. Itchy face. Right, guys, I'm one of those people, if you get me started, I will come down on you with a big old hammer. You'll think Thor just hit you. You think Cain Velasquez just knocked the hell at your head, which we're going to get into that topic in just a minute. But see, and here's on a personal note. I voted both Republican and Democrat. I vote for the person who is best qualified to run the job. Plain and simple on that one. And the fact of the matter is, I look at the overall picture. Look at what the person stands for. Look at the issues. The most dangerous voter in creation right now is an educated voter. Not just, don't just say, listen to what they say. Well, I'm in in our home state of Alabama. We've got a situation where one of the candidates is saying, well, I will not accept a paycheck until we reach full employment. Please define full employment. Is he's going to wait until we have 100% employment for all citizens of Alabama? He'll never get paid. Yeah, because we have too many people that don't want to get jobs. Exactly. And I know there's so many different ways I want to run on that one right now. But by the same token, let's go ahead and go around the round table. Mark Bowman, come on in. We're talking about the Stand Up for WWE campaign. Yes, we are. That was really, really good. Awe-inspiring, man. Well, I'm telling you. Those... <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, honestly, it's, it's, it's bull crap that they're, you know, you know, saying all this stuff. So, like I said, why not just throw it back in their face? Come I'm on. all about it, dude. You know me. Oh, I know. <laughs> so, I mean, if you're going to, you know, if, if they're going to act like that, then, you know, we need to play hardball. Show us, like you guys said, show up with your merchandise. Yeah. You know, hell, register your John Cena action figure to vote if you can. Yeah, I would be, I'd be absolutely stunned if on Fox News or CNN or one of the other news sources, uh, they show the Connecticut polling place on, on Tuesday, November 2nd, and somebody shows up with the Stone Cold Steve Austin foam finger. Oh, you know what's going to happen then. I would, I, sorry, I'd love to see that as, as an authentic photograph. I'd love to see somebody do that here in Alabama, our home market. Now, it would be a little bit more, less of a challenge for that to happen. Because, you know, down here, we're a little bit less stuck up about the way we handle things. Yeah. I mean, and the fact that, tell you what, um, like I said, bringing everybody up to speed, also going to cover UFC 121, some of the events that happened from last night. We have a brand new UFC heavyweight champion in Cain Velasquez. And, Chase, you scare me. You actually have notes. I watched Raw, and I made notes. My wife cried when Cain won, I swear to God. She burst, she burst out into tears because he's Mexican and she hates Brock Lesnar. Did anybody happen to catch the interview that was done with uh, Undertaker. the Undertaker? Actually, I watched the YouTube video. Lean in a little bit. Watched the YouTube video right before uh, Wick came and picked me up when uh, Brock just kind of looked at him, looked at Taker, and it's kind of weird to hear Taker not speak in his rest in PCs. Uh, yeah, and he was just like, like, well, you know, he's like, sounded very country. Texas. Yeah, Texas. And then he was just like. What, you want to go? You want to go now? Uh, you want to do this now? Yeah, they were just like mumbling, and I was just like, and here comes WrestleMania 27. That's what a lot of people are talking about. Now, that would be a great coup. And I also love Undertaker's answer uh, to the question that was posed to him 20 years ago. If mixed martial arts were as big then as it is now, is there a possibility we would have seen The Undertaker in an MMA octagon? He looked straight into the camera and straight at the reporter, smiled and said, safe bet. So, because you have to look at some of the things that The Undertaker has brought in as far as different fighting styles on his persona, the gloves and everything else, you know, and for a while he was called the best pure striker in the WWE. I think that even comes in uh, first place to Matt Striker being the second best striker in WWE. And I think I think Mark Calloway would do tremendous because if you watch him start to finish in his career, going all the way back to Texas Red, and picking it up through the Punisher and me, Mark Callis, and da 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 the skyscrapers and making his way to The Undertaker, including the American Badass. He's got a style and a great ring presence at all times, and that is something you have to have in mixed martial arts, Mr. MCO Chase Pearson. Um, you did not do that. You know I'm not paying attention at the moment. I'm You're actually, running the board. I'm working on the Beyond Ringside Facebooks and all that. So you Oh, you're over the ahead. social network? Yes, sir. Y'all go ahead. Okay, okay. By the way, how long do we have um, before break? 
as long as you want. I got it stopped. Okay, about to say we uh, go take us to break in about one minute from right now. Mark Bowman, come on in. Taker, mm, MMA. Maybe ten years ago. Maybe ten years ago, but I think he's. Well, gone. If it was twenty years ago. Well, I don't know about twenty years ago. That's what he said. That was those were his words. Mm, no. I don't think I, – I don't know. He – well, I mean, when he first started off, they pushed him pretty big, so. Yeah. Was, I don't know. I don't know if he would have left then. I mean, if he would have got out – if it would have been as big as it was 10 years ago, mm-hmm. as it is now, he might have pulled a, a you know a Brock or a, who, or a Bobby Lashley or whatever and left. Yeah. And then he would have done good. Now, if he tries to do it now, there's no way. Oh, no. He's he, admitted He's admitted he's um, that, that, that window is closed. Yeah. Wicked? There are very few people, I think, that could make the transition. I mean, even 20 years ago, 10 years ago – uh, from MMA to WWE, you know, or vice versa, just wrestling in general. Very few, and I do not think that mean Mark Callis, Undertaker, Mark Calloway, whatever. I don't think he, he's too tall. He's too lean. He would have had to beef up to some of the others. No freaking way. Because ten years ago, Andre Arvlosky was ruling, and Frank Shamrock and Ken Shamrock. There's no way. Folks, tell you what, we're going to go and go to break real quick. We're going to be back on Beyond Ringside in about two minutes. Stay tuned. Welcome to the original Rocket. Welcome back in live to the Magic City Online Studios in Birmingham, Alabama. Welcome back into Beyond Ringside. Yours truly, Fast Eddie Lane. And Mr. MCO Chase Pearson. What's happening, y'all? Happy in October. With the news. And I'm La Flama Blanco. There you go. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> 205-316-9900, the number to call. Folks, once again, just after the top of the hour, we're going to be joined by professional wrestling legend Ox Baker. Looking forward to that. The maestro of the Hurt Punch, Heart Punch, all of the above. Because remember, after Stan Stasiak passed away, he did change the name to the Hurt Punch and showed a lot of tribute in that one as well. I want to take a look at a couple of things that occurred this past Monday night on WWE Raw. As, of course, we were talking about the Stand Up for WWE campaign, which is active and going. You can find out more about that at WWE.com. Um... A lot of different things occurred, and actually one of the things that I'm happy about in Monday Night Raw right now is the continued push for gold dust. It's like all of, it's kind of like the Kane scenario all over again, just like out of nowhere. It's like, boom, here he comes. And if there is anybody on the roster who is genuinely deserving other than William Regal, um, I would have to sit back and say it's gold dust because he's done everything that's been asked for him to do. He d- he's done the J-O-B on more than one occasion to different people to try to help push them, elevate them, and get them over. And now it seems like the storyline with him, the Million Dollar Championship belt, and uh, Ted DiBiase, which, matter of fact, word has it, I did catch this earlier today, that uh, there has been a match added to bragging rights tonight, and Ted DiBiase and Goldust will be going against each other on the pay-per-view itself, which I'm very happy to see that one. Mark Bowman, come on in. Yeah, actually, I noticed that this morning uh, Goldust tweeted that he was waiting to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he said, whoop Ted DiBiase's ass, something along those lines. But, no, I agree. I mean, the man's done everything under the sun that's been put in front of him. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, give him some kind of push. I mean, he's starting to get that, was that the thing on NXT where he's dating or going to marry Double Double E? Mm-hmm. I like to call her female Vladimir Kozlov. There you go. But she looks way better in a dress than Vladimir does. Thank you for noticing that. Wicked Nemesis, come on in. It's about time. Goldust, is, of course, as most people know, is my son's favorite wrestler. My son's eight. I mean, that's just how much respect this man carries. Even when he was with the late, great Luna Vachon, I still liked him. And I used to take so much crap. I mean, most people remember him. You got Ahmed Johnson running him through the door. I mean, who can forget that? Exactly. Once again, don't forget, you can always catch us. By the way, chat room very much wide open right now over at Ustream.tv backslash channel, backslash beyond, dash ringside, dash live. I'm trying to remember if the link to that chat room is up on beyondringside.com. I think it is, but if it's not, I'll have it back up there by the end of the show. I'll check it out and let you know. Sounds like a plan to me. Welcome back in, Jason. Come to Jesus. (laughs) Wicked. It's time to get crunk, everybody. My crunk citrus juice. For everybody out there, get rid of the Red Bull. Move to the crunk. Crunk juice. I haven't done, I haven't really done Red Bull in a while. I mean, honestly, it doesn't give me wings. It doesn't drag me down or pick me up. It's kind of like I will drink it for the taste of it because it doesn't make me anything hyperactive. Or Chase, do me a favor. Go ahead and click on the phone line for a second. Got James calling in from Houston, Texas. James, what's up, buddy? Oop, we got him on. James, how we doing? Hey, fellas. How's it going? Doing well. Um, what you got on your brain today? 
nothing much. I just uh, I tried to catch out last week. I think I might have been having link problems or something like that because I couldn't get a hold of the show and uh, just. You know, just wanted to talk a little bit before Bragging Rights comes on a little bit or whatever. Did y'all talk about uh, UFC 121 already? Not yet in its entirety. Actually, we were going to cover a little bit of that a little bit later on in the show or coming back during the 10 o'clock show. We were talking about the uh, Lesnar-Velasquez fight, which actually shocked the hell out of me. I was DJing a private party last night when the first run of the pay-per-view occurred, so I managed to catch it on DVR, and Wicked Nemesis sent me text. About eight or nine people sent me text messages last night about, holy cow, guess what happened? And I have to go, Wicked, come on in. I just want to say I was I was almost as surprised as the Sagat rising knee from Brock Lesnar as I think uh, Kane was. Kane just stepped aside. God he hit it once. You would think he missed it. He hit it again. Oh come on, man! That that Sagat knee is not working. <laughs> I'll have to agree. I mean, that's like I'm trying to figure out: is he trying to go for a combination of a Superman punch and a high knee lift from uh, Mr. Wrestling number two, or? And, of course, we were also talking about the Undertaker situation when Taker was being interviewed. I saw that, like I said, I, um, I saw that earlier today. But coming out of last night, a number of things occurred, and they laid down a number of different building blocks coming um, coming out of the pay-per-view itself. Um, on the whole, I saw it start to finish, and it did look like UFC is back on the right track. Um, the match order was good. There were a couple of ups and downs throughout the series of the pay-per-view, but I think, you know, all in all, everything's in place. James? Okay, can I ask you a question? Sure. And me, me, me and a friend was posing this. Do you think, and I tend to agree with what they were thinking, do you think that the free show they did last week was better than the paper, outside of Velasquez and Lesnar, was better than the show last night? Mm, 50-50. I, really... I don't know. I, I, I tend to think the London show was a little bit better, for me, in my personal opinion. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit 50, 50 on it because you've got a diff, uh, you've got different fighters in different circumstances. You've got the international flair of 120 and then you've got the domestic at home feel of 121 where you've got a little bit more familiarity to it. Um, I liked both shows, but I can't really say that one was that markedly better than the other one. Um, mm -hmm. you know, in all actuality, it's like asking is episode six of the ultimate fighter better than episode seven? Oh, okay, I, I can I can understand that. Okay. And because remember, you had three major events go down this um, within the last few days. You had UFC 121 go down, Strike Force Challengers wasn't that far back, and of course this past Thursday you had Bellator. And yeah, yeah. And I'm not gonna I can't really compare the organizations because they all have a different feel, they all have a different flow. Um, I remember the fiasco that was the live show on CBS for Strike Force a while back, but then by the same token, they've also gotten their ducks back in a row, so to speak. So, I mean, it's like, would the does the overall flair of one show outshine the other right now? No. Well, I guess in my personal opinion, I was thinking like, like in terms of like just entertainment wise, like were you thoroughly entertained by one show more than the other? I guess I was trying to. Mm, it's kind of like I said, I'm 50 50 on it because they did a great job with both of them. And I think all in all, there's really. It's not a case of the only way they can go is up, but they can always take it up a little bit higher. And like I said, they did a great job with the flow, the match order. You know, you had different styles different um, in different matchups, and I was really enjoying that. So, And I had a chance yeah. to catch the Bellator show this past week, and they had some excellent fighting on there as well. Would I compare it stacked up to UFC? No. Would I compare it to the previous Bellator show a week ago? Yeah, I would. I think it's tremendous the fact that Fox Sports Network is carrying Bellator on their, on their channel. Uh, one thing, well, one thing coming out of uh, UFC 21 though, Junior Dos Santos and Cain Velasquez to me is probably going to be a hell of a fight whenever that happens. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, you've got Cain, um, you've got uh, Carwin who has re-upped with UFC. Yeah, against uh, Big Country Roy Nelson, that's going to be a good fight too. Yeah, that one should that should be fun to watch. Chase, we have another caller from the 315 area code. You want to bring him in? Yeah, bring him in for All a minute. Right. Well, then they hung up. Never mind. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Call back. <laughs> yeah, really. Maybe. There you go. Yeah. Um, actually, we're going to go to break probably in about three minutes from right now. That We're going to go ahead and take it all the way through um, just a little bit before 12 after. We're going to get Ox Baker on the line. Like I said, we're all looking forward to it. I think that's one of the reasons why we're all four here in the studio today. <laughs> Not to mention bragging rights. Chase? No. <laughs> Chase. I'm here to be behind the control bin. I'll make sure all this runs right. There you go. That's why he said. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Say it again, Hello? James. 
I was like, yeah, I just wanted to just come and say a quick hello and everything, because I know y'all about to have an interview in a little bit, and I have to do some things before bragging rights. Uh, we're all going to have a bragging rights post show? Yes, we are. Uh, 10 o'clock Central okay. Time, yes. All right, I will call back. Sounds like a plan. Always good to talk to you, brother. All right, guys, take care. All right. Now, like I said, a number of this, um, number of the fights from last night, I was really having fun with. I mean, the Jake Shields Marvin Kampman fight is like mm, overall split decision. Uh, Shields picking up, but I think that there was a great accounting for Marvin Kampman in that one in more ways than one. So, would um, do you discount anything that either fighter did in the overall? Um, even though one got the win, one got the loss. That's the only way you can look at it. Um, it was really enjoyable to watch. I had fun with it. Um, just, I've seen so many different reports come down the pike. It's like, well, I really wasn't impressed with it. It's like, okay, take everything in proper perspective and then formulate an opinion. There are so many so-called experts out there. I'll never profess to be an MMA expert. I'm an avid fan of the product, but I will never claim to be all that in a bag of Fritos, not even Frito scoops. Um, tell you what, we're getting ready to head into an um, actually. 15 seconds till break. All right. Then tell you what, let's go ahead and take it out that way. Folks, we're going to go, and go, uh, go away for just a couple minutes. We're going to be back on Beyond Ringside in just a couple minutes. Don't forget, you got it. Your phone call is always welcome to 503-16-9900, and we'll be right back right after this. When planning your next party or special event, insist on the best. Full Range Entertainment is a professional entertainment company providing a full range of services. From professional disc jockeys and MCs to catering and photography, when the details of your special day must be perfect, call us first. Wedding receptions, corporate parties, school functions, birthday celebrations, and more. We also have Birmingham's largest selection of karaoke tracks available. With over 40 years combined experience, Full Range Entertainment can provide you with the talent and professionalism you need and deserve to make your next event one you'll never forget for more information on the full range of services we offer call 533 hits that's 533 h-i-t-s or check us out on our website at fullrangeentertainment.com Phones are hot, and we are back. Welcome back into Beyond Ringside, live from the Magic City Online Studios in Birmingham, Alabama. Yours truly, Fast Eddie Lane. And Mr. MCO Chase Pearson. What's happening, y'all? Yeah. Wicked. <laughs> Smack him, Mabo. Mabo, come on in. I am no longer La Flama Blanca. I am Ombre Negro. <laughs> You're just flipping back and forth both ways, aren't you? <laughs> Let's not misconstrue that. There you go. It's what it sounded like to me. Chase, if you do the honors, ladies and gentlemen, live on the line here on Beyond Ringside, he is a professional wrestling legend in every sense of the word. One of the maestros of the heart punch, the maestro of the hurt punch. He is the one, the only, Ox Baker, li joining us live on Beyond Ringside. Mr. Baker, how's your day going? It's a very, very good day today, and I can see your ratings. It must be way, way down so you call Ox Baker, because you want one of the great interviews of all time. And tonight, I am ready to give you one of my great interviews. Me and Don talked about it all day today. Rebecca helped me rehearse, and we're ready. Enjoy it. Either be good or you don't get any shepherd's pie off of me. So I've got to give you a great interview to help your reading and to get fed. Well, first off, Mr. Baker, it is an honor to have you on board with us today, Ox. First off, I want to go ahead and jump straight on in. Who told you about yeah, our ratings? You found what out. What was your question, sir? You found out all seven people that were listening right about now. How did you find out about our ratings? Well, uh, I was checking, you know, and every anytime these stations get way down, they try everybody else. They talk to Cola, they talk to the guy with mumble mouth and all that, but then they finally call Ox Baker and they know that the people, you know, the people, they want to call in, they want to ask me questions, if they want to ask what I'm doing, they want to know about my new cookbook, they want to know about my other book, Life After Wrestling, all they have to do is, is your station getting good ratings or not? You know. There you go. Up. Oh, wait. We just went up one. Hey, we got eight people now. Um, first off, <laughs> let me go ahead and ask. Now, your background not only goes to professional wrestling, but it goes further than that. Um, it goes into amateur wrestling as well as um, a background in boxing as well, sir. 
Oh, yes. I was, I was an amateur Golden Glove champion. I was a state champion in Iowa, the greatest wrestling of all times. And I got into wrestling because I found out a lot of the guys I beat up were in there making big money. And I said, well, if they can do it because they're not half the guy I am. And nobody can talk like Ox. It's just in a poll that Vince McMahon had. He said Ox Baker is the number one talker in wrestling. And the funny part about that, Vince McMahon has never used me. <laughs> he never wanted Ox. He said Ox is a loudmouth. And people nowadays just don't like loudmouths, you know. Well, let me go ahead and ask because you have worked in so many different areas of the United States and across the and across the country. I mean, across the world. Now, domestically. If there was one area that jumps into your mind as being one of your favorite areas to work all the way from start to finish, what would that area be? Well, I was out doing a movie out in Hollywood, and they called, Australia called me and said, Ox, we just had our champion break his arm, and he has a whole week with uh, Andre the Giant at the time. He said, we know that you're one of the two guys that Andre got disqualified, and you won a match from Andre the Giant. And that's only happened with two other guys. And I was, would you please come to Australia? So I went there. I was going to do a whole week at the time. I was going to do The Caveman out in Hollywood. And I was there, and Andre, he sold out every night for a whole week. We had two or three riots, and there was no winners, of course. And then Andre said, I want to come back and wrestle this guy. So the promoter said, Ox. Would you please stay over in Australia? We'll treat you real good. And I said, well, I got this movie to do. They said, well, so we already called him and said, we cannot release you. So someone else has to do the caveman. I was mad at him, but I spent six beautiful months over in Australia. The people love wrestling so much over there. Every night, every day, they pick me up. I had 11 birthdays one year. You know, and I had 14 anniversaries and that day, because they were always putting on parties, picking me up, and we ran. And Andre came back, and we again we sold out for 10 straight days, and we was going to go back, but lo and behold, the promoter up and died after I left us. So I never got back to Australia. But one of my great moments was Australia. And I wish I could, you could name me all the towns I was in there, but anyway, it was Andre the Giant and Ox Baker, 20. Three matches, and we had 23 sellouts. Now, you are most noted as being a singles competitor. You've all, um, Every once in a while, someone would say Ox Baker doesn't play well with others, but you've actually had some very notable tag team partners. One that comes to my mind is Killer Carl Krupp. Well, I tried different partners, but these here partners always wanted so much out of me. Did they, like today, Rebecca had to hold out my hand over my mouth. Wait, just get over here! I want a glass of water! She had to shut me up, you know, and, but the idea, uh, a lot of the guys didn't like loud love, but I got Carl Krupp, and he had one rule, if you cheated him, he would leave you. We had a great run with Dick DeBruce in Indianapolis, Indiana, and lo and behold, Dick DeBruce had cheated him on a payoff. The next day, he called me, because he was a Canadian, said, Ox, up, I'm up in New Brunswick. I had to quit him. I said, what a tag team champion. He said, just take them belts. I won't tell you what he wanted me to do with the belts. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, take them belts and shoot them. And I never got a chance with Carl Krupp again. But with that attitude, I, I wouldn't have liked it. Because a lot of times, the promoters cheated Ox Baker. The guy said, why do you work for these guys? I said, well, I never met anybody in Rasson. Forty years, I I never met anybody that I didn't like. They said, but Ox, a lot of them cheated. You guys ratted on you. They did that. A couple of them took your colored girlfriends away from you. I said, I never said I got down to their level. I liked them because I love wrestling. Even when they were, even in the 60s, where we was getting $30 a night. For two years, I got $30 a night. That's all I was making in a day. But I loved it. I like to roar the crowd. And the best thing I do when a can would bounce off my head, because I said to the motor, boy, I have, a, I have a lump there. Said, oh, God, it's, it's bad. You know, one guy broke a chair over my head, 23 cents. I must have got him worked up. He said, you sure did. He said, uh, we never seen it. I said, well, I don't like it. Because if I work him up, you know, in the 60s, they was paying a dollar and 15 cents to get it. If I ain't got their money's worth, I was happy. Sell my head up. I'll wrestle again tomorrow night. And I told Ernie Ladd one time, you know, I just got six stitches in my head. Slap me up the head. Knock them stitches out. 
I wanted the fans to get their money. Nowadays, I don't believe one of the things they don't do, they do not get the fans their money's worth. They entertain them just like we did, but they didn't get their money's worth. Because I know, over the years, I got four doors knocked down, people wanting to beat me up for knocking out their big hero. They don't do that anymore. They applaud them. Nobody ever applauded me. And I remember my great friend, Killer Kowalski, one night he slapped me up the side of the head and said, what was that for? He said, big mouth, you made a couple of them people laugh. They paid a dollar and a quarter. They didn't come here to laugh. They just see, they come here to see Rasta. So if you get here again, I'm going to slap you again. He said, do you like that or not? I said, no, Mr. Kowalski, you're right, you know. Not that I was scared of him, but he, he was an older man. I couldn't hit anybody older than I was. <laughs> is there any questions for me? Yes, sir. Actually, we've got a few. I want to bring in one of my tag team partners. With the, he is called the Wicked Nemesis. Wick, come on in. Yes, sir, Mr. Baker. How does it feel to be known by someone? Mr. Wicked, don't stutter. I mean, I know you're in the presence of a great talker, but I want you to talk. You know, like Don. A lot of time when he's on the road with me, I say, Don, would you please speed up? He says, Just sit there and keep your mouth shut. I'm driving you. But if you got a question, Mr. Wicked. Is it wicked or wicker? Wicked. Wicked, yeah. Go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, how does it feel to be known more for not only being a badass wrestler, but also for your stint in Escape from New York, where you took on well, State Well, what Christmas? happened was I actually lost that movie. you got to hear this story. The, the great, one of my great friends of all time, Bruiser Brody, got that part. And I was sitting there in North Carolina, and John Carter said, Hey, Ark, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm about ready to go on TV. He said, I need you in St. Louis. I got a $2,000 bill. You come here. I said, yeah, but Bruiser Brody got that part. Well, he said he lipped off to somebody in Puerto Rico last night. And he got stabbed and killed. I said, he got stabbed and killed, and you called me for that shit? He said, ah, this is show business. Show business is gone. I said, well, I won't watch that movie for 10 years if I do it. So we went there in one of the great cult movies of all time. A lot of people ask me a lot of questions. What do I think of Kurt Russell? What do, what do I think of Ernest Borgnine? A lot of questions with me. Donald Pleasant. I enjoyed myself, but I hated to get it because of my friend Bruiser. Bro. What a great, tough guy. Toughest guy of all times in Russell. But I got the part because Bruiser Brody got stabbed. Okay. Now, if I may. Now, in the days where the territories reigned supreme over the superpower corporation, so to speak, of course, you had the National Wrestling Alliance that was a superpower for the most part, but it was based on the territory system. Now, three areas that pop into my mind, if I may, um, include the states of Texas, Florida, and Georgia, as far and especially Florida, because I know that you had a great run of the Sunshine State, especially working with Eddie Graham. Down there, they had this big fat guy called the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. And every night he'd get on there and yak, 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 that he was Mr. The American Dream, he called himself. Well, I got on there and I said, you know, I came all the way from Dallas, Texas, because you might be the dream, Dusty, but I'm Mr. Reality. I'm going to knock you down. I can do two things for you. I can give you a bus ticket so you can get your big body on there with your six and seven bags and get out of town, or you can get in there and get a real beating, because I like to beat people up. I used to say, anybody can kick somebody standing up, but it takes a great man like Ox Baker to win on their hands and, he, and then kick him in the face. And you know, we had 88 matches, me and Dusty Rowe, sold out every night, every night, every night. I come up to Eddie Graham. He said, Ox, you're doing so great here. He said, God, you're doing so great for my Floridas. I never had it. I said, Eddie Graham, just think if I won one match. 88 disqualification. Dusty Rhodes never got his hand raised with me. He was always mad about that there. I think he even burnt my car up one night. Somebody did. I could have been a fan, but I love Florida. I, I had a big sign. Florida belongs, Ox, bigger. Get rid of the American dream. But, you know, after I left there, they never called me to come back. I never know why. But I went back to Texas, me and Fritz Von Eric and his sons. Well, that's another story. Okay, Mr. Wicked, what are you going to ask me? Come on in, Wick. Yeah, I just want to know how does it feel to be like such a cult figure. Not only, you were, I mean, you were a badass before the movie, but after the movie, somebody my age, I'm 31. That's what we know you for. We didn't get to watch a lot of your matches. 
But to know is that you right? Who you missed out? You know, the only person that lifts off to me now is this Joanne. She makes this great shepherd's pie. I guess it or is it stew or something. She made and she did ox. If you don't do a great interview tonight, there's no stew for you. You got to pay your own way to the show, and you can't pick popcorn off the floor. You got to buy it at the counter there. A lot of people, I, I knock the bag out of their hand and I get the popcorn. For, <laughs> I love that free popcorn, you know. I want to bring in another one of our partners, Mr. MCO Chase Pearson. Chase, come on in. Mr. Ox, how are you doing, sir? How are you doing? Are you enjoying this interview or not? Yeah, I'm having a great time. Everybody's with it. enjoyed my interview for years, and they've always said Ox Baker, the loud mouth, is number one. But well, I want to tell you something right now. People, do you have a question, did you? Yes, sir. I've got one for my chat room on Ustream, and uh, courtesy of Tag, he wants to know who was your stiffest opponent to work with. Well, as long as I tell you, a lot of people say, you know, after you get out of sports, you can't do anymore. But what I did, I wrote a cookbook. I, I cooked for the roster over here. It was called Ox Baker, The Fallen Warriors, and I just started number two, Fallen Warriors number two, or the Grill We Must, 70 stories. And again, Joanne and Don are on me. Rebecca said, get on that typewriter to write that story. But I'm writing another, there's life after Rossum. You don't have to give up just because you're through with Rossum. You know, when you kind of hang your tights up, a lot of people get depressed. But I don't because I write. Because, you know, over the years, and the fans have always loved, oh, my toughest opponent, you asked me. Well, I got to tell you, <laughs> I, was, I was three years, and there was a tough guy up there. They said, you know what he does, Ox, when he trains? He takes a dog in each hand, gets in a snow drip, and he runs until the dogs get tired. I said, who is that? They said, the Mongolian stopper. And I got in there with the Mongolian stopper, and I'm telling you what, he knocked me down so many times, slipped me against the wall, Stu Hart. Who'd stretch me a few times down in his? That's another story. We gotta get to one. We get to Stu Hart's dungeon, but he's made me scream in the dungeon. But that here Mongolian stopping night after night after night, he would kick and shove, he slap me against the wall. He almost beat me a couple times, in fact. But the Mongolian stopper out of Calgary, Alberta, Canada, the home. You ever heard of Stu Hart? Oh yes. Oh yes. Well, he took me down in his dungeon. He said, ah, 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 I want to show you this hold. And he'd make me scream. I would yell and yell. He'd come on. You could scream louder than that. His wife would come down after a half hour and say, someone's on the phone with you, Stu. And he'd say, Ox, wait for me. I'll be back in 10 minutes. As he left the door, I grabbed my clothes. They picked me up twice running in the snow. I didn't have half my clothes on. I said, Please, lock me up. I don't care. But don't send me back to that dungeon. I don't want to do any more screen. I threw up four times. Don't send me back to Stu Hart. But I went back the next day and said, Stu, I don't think you can beat me again. And then I screamed for another half hour. But I enjoy every bit of it because I had learned a couple of holes. A lot of people think Rossin is this and that. But I know a couple of them holes myself. How are we doing on this interview, okay? Wonderfully well, sir. Actually, uh, we're doing great. Don't say okay. We're doing great. I never said, I never I, said okay. okay I want mean, to make sure that, that uh, Joanne makes me that shepherd pie or that stew, whatever she makes me. You know. Hey, so and then even Don, pie. who won't give me a free cup of coffee, he makes me a cup of coffee and charges me a quarter for it. He says, Ox, you know, this coffee I don't get for free, you know. So, But Don and Joanne, oh, yeah. Ask me a question for playing it out loud. I want to interview here. Wicked Nemesis, come on back in. Yeah, how do you, Mr. Baker, how do you feel about the, the guys in the business today? Do you feel like they're not getting trained properly? Uh, maybe they don't have the love for the business? What's, I mean, there is a complete difference, as you know. I mean, being in the business for so long, I've only been in the well, business for years. Well, I was actually telling them for the longest time because a lot of them are getting paid real, real big money. And I even, uh, uh, Got a call the other day from Randy Sab. He's a macho man. He said, Ox, I need you to manage me in the WWE if Vince would take you back. I called Vince, and Vince said, Ox, you're still a loud mouth, you know. So, Vince, when you say that you had the best in your territory for all these years, until you get Ox Baker there, until you hear Ox Baker on the TV in the WWE, they got to be a second-rate outfit. But I want to tell you, I went to a few matches, 
uh, me and his, my friend of mine, you know, me and Don snuck in the back. No, we paid in the I don't know what we did. We got in the back door. People still packed because it's a different kind of training. When they have seven women in the ring uh, in a bed, the first laughing gets thrown out, you know. But I don't believe that the people get entertained nowadays the way we entertain. Yes, we entertain them. But when they go home and say, boy, I got my dollar and a half. Now it's a hundred dollars to go to the matches. And Vince won't let the loudmouth ox baker. Brandy Savage, I'll go back with you, Vince. I'll do anything you want to. Just take that ox baker. And I even told Vince, let's start a contest. You know, a lot of people in here said that, uh, that this, what was his name? Uh, he said it was better talking than me. Well, what was his name, Rebecca? Uh, she's trying to think of herself. Jerry the King? Uh, Hulk Hogan? Hulk Hogan don't owe one hole. That's a, a knee across, uh, a yes, leg across the uh, But I'm trying to say, who's the greatest talker in wrestling today? Wicked nemesis. <laughs> Eddie Lyon. <laughs> Mr. Who? MCO Chase Pearson. I think Who's we're, that? We're the best talkers I'm in the to business. Think of the guy, you, you know, he he had the Piper spit. A lot of people said Roddy that Piper Piper. was it, Ronnie Piper? Yep, Roddy. yes, sir. Ronnie Piper is a better talker, but you know what it was? Anybody can talk if you give them a script. Nobody wrote anything down. Of course, uh, Joanne and Don went over the thing with me, and Rebecca, uh, you know, maybe put the TV off. Wouldn't even let me watch. Uh, weeds today, you know, because she wanted me to get this here interview down pat. So I'm trying to do a good job, but I haven't got any good. Has any fans called in and asked any questions? Can I ask any question, answer any question about wrestling? Because I want the fans to know it and love it like I do. Four years I've been in there, and the only reason I had to quit, the knees got so bad, and I couldn't give out that 170%. So I had to give it up, but I still, I don't watch it anymore, by the way, but guys tell me about it, you know. Mike Coombs calls me up there and said, Ox, you can come to this match and that match, you know. But no, I can't wrestle anymore. But I do manage. I, I became a manager, and also four guys that I manage and talk. I didn't tell you about my wrestling school, did I? You didn't no. ask about the wrestling school. Actually, that was yes, one. I got a wrestling school. Uh, the Adam Bomb train with me. The Undertaker train with me. Papa Pump train with me. Four or five guys I sent there, made them all millionaires. They said, Ox, I wish you could become my manager, but Vince don't want you. I said, okay, well, take these other guys. Take the second Raiders, but when you talk about the greatest talker, Roddy Piper. What do you think of Roddy Piper as a talker? Now, as a talker, Piper, great yeah. on the microphone. He's one people who I can, um, who is of the ilk that could talk people Are into the chairs. Are you trying better than I am? I never said that. Oh, come on. You're, you're hitting around there. Is no, I said or one. Not? Are, we, are we on the same level? I, no, I said one of the better talkers. I didn't say he was in your class, sir. Chase Pearson, oh, come on back God. in. Ox, right, I think you need to come and break down, Eddie. Just give him a up, slap. You know, oh. That uh, Joanne makes me buy my own popcorn now. She don't want me picking it off the floor. Just buy it out front. Put some butter on there. We go to movies together. She won't sit in the same seat with me because she always gets that. Because she, she gets so loud, you're always clapping your hands and yelling. And some of these movies nowadays are lousy. Oh my! I wish you but you got another question for me? Yes, we do. Matter of fact, uh, this one sent in through our chat room. Um, oh. Is there a tip that you can give to a referee to help the wrestlers in the indie shows? You know what I hate nowadays? For 40 years, like I said, I never hit a fan, never pushed a fan. I never touched a referee. I hate it today. No referee. It should be like, you know, there was a guy I just thought of in the Grand Wizard. He only managed two guys in his whole career. The real Sheik. And he matched, managed Ox Baker. And the, the Grand Wizard said, I have a rule. Anybody touches me or the referee, they're automatic. The matches when they're pushing and shoving. You see the matches, the, the, the football players, they don't push the referee. Nope. No, this other game, hit that ball over the fence. Oh, tennis, yeah. I hate tennis. I'd like to hit someone with a racket, but you can't. You can't even talk loud there. They throw you out, you know. I mean, uh, the great w woman, uh, William, she got thrown out because she cussed the referee out, right? 
No, but I never touched that referee. I made them part of the matches, and I tell them, if I even look like I'm going to hit you, disqualify me. Find me $5, whatever you have to do, because <laughs> the referee is part of them matches, too. If You can't do uh, any match without the referee. And I get so tired of the fans. You know, some lousy fans out there, too. I like them all. I, I, I love them all, you know. I've chewed snuff with them, blah, blah, blah. But they love to say the referee is blind, you know. But, no, the referees, they, to me, they can't be touched. They can't be shoved. But they do that all the time. That's sickening to me. Do me a favor. Um, Mark Bowman, come on in. You had a question for Ox Baker. Uh, yes, I was wondering if uh, there would be a shepherd's pie recipe in your cookbook. Well, the idea is, I'm glad you said that because Joanne and Rebecca both make great shepherd's pie. I tried to eat some of shepherd's pie the other day, but we had a fan over, you know. Jeff, the other day, I got one little helper. She had a giant bowl he was so hungry, he ate the rest of that bowl. I said, save some for me. But Joanne's uh, shepherd pie is good, too, but uh, she makes hers just a little bit. So I got a con to what I, I tell one of them hers is a little better and the other makes some. I go back and forth. But I eat that shepherd pie. That's one of my favorites, you know. And oh, you, didn't, you didn't ask me about my cookbook. That was actually- I won a contest in Connecticut here with my chili. With my meatloaf, they got that on TV. If you ever watch uh, Bruno Sammartino's uh, uh, biography, he talks about my meatloaf, right? I make great meatloaf, but uh, Rebecca won't let me in the kitchen anymore, and Joanne's rule is uh, there's only one cook in the house, you know. So sit in there and drink your coffee with Don and tell him what a great driver is. Cause that Don, he, when he ever seen him drive on the road, he gets behind somebody for miles and miles. I said, won't you drive a little faster? He said, I'm only going to get there a minute behind that guy there. Oh, a smart attitude. But he's, he's my driver, and he writes down a lot of things for me, you know. But the idea, yeah, it's a contest between Rebecca and uh, uh, and anybody else that makes a good shepherd's pie, you know. And also, a lot of people... Uh, I'm a diabetic. The only thing I can eat is peanut butter cookies. I can't eat uh, chocolate chip cookies, things like that. Uh, anything with sugar in there, but uh, being a diabetic. But you can send Hello? 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 Hang on one second. We're having phone line difficulties. Ox, hang on the line for just a second. Not a problem. Hello. Ah, there you are, Ox. Okay. We Where the hell did you go? <laughs> I never kind of, I've been asking, you probably shut me off on the air. Because I never curse. And one thing, I, I'm against that cursing. I even got with Vince McMahon for two years. I said, Vince, I know how bad you want me there. But if you allow cursing, I won't come. He said, well, I guess you don't make it there. But a year later, he bleeps that cursing. The young kids are watching that wrestling. They don't need that cursing. No, they don't. I'm the greatest interview of all time. I don't have to curse the interview. A lot of them think you got to do this and that. Blah, 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 blah. I don't like that at all. I have to ask. We're running short on time. Mr. Baker, can you come back on and join us again sometime? I wish you would ask me again because you, you didn't ask me enough questions, you know, and uh, uh, the idea, I don't know. I'm going to call Joanne right away and see if I get that pie, you know. It had to be up to standards, you know. And she said she promised she wouldn't get Jeff or, you know, Jeff ate three-fourths of that shepherd's pie. I only got one helping the other night. Yes, call me again. You got it, Mr. Baker, anytime. And matter of fact, we're going to say I know it. your ratings are going to go out. Of, I can just see them. They're going to mushroom out there. They're going to go up. When can you have me back? In a couple of weeks? We can have you back on in a couple of weeks. That sounds really good. I'm actually going to. What gonna... about another month? Okay, we can do that, too. Matter of fact, I'll, right. I'll call you tomorrow, and we can definitely work on the time. But let me go ahead and say yeah, on behalf of all of us. Uh, I smell something on the stove. I don't know what it is. <laughs> you bet you said no shepherd pie tonight because Jeff ain't here, you know. So we'll be talking to you. It's Thank great. You, we'll call it. Thank you, sir. We'll speak. I'll talk to you first thing tomorrow. I guarantee it. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, the legendary Ox Baker. Thank you for coming on Beyond Ringside. <laughs> Folks, we're going to go to a quick break. We're going to be back on Beyond Ringside in about two minutes. Stay tuned. Live for the 
the Magic City Online Studios in beautiful Birmingham, Alabama. Yours truly, Fast Eddie Lane. And Mr. MCO Chase Fisher. What's happening, y'all? I do not have a stuttering problem. There you go. And, and I'm m- 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 Mabo. <laughs> Phone lines back open full scale, 205-316-9900. Bracking Rice from World Wrestling Entertainment going to be starting in just a few minutes. And I want to give a very special thank you to the one, the only, Ox Baker for joining us on Beyond Ringside. That was fun. Um, do you think he's got a cookbook coming out sometime soon? I don't know, but he better get some shepherd's pie for that interview. There you go. Wicked? I do not have a stuttering problem. There you go. Okay. Yes, you do. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm the one who stutters. Hell, I think it might be more Tourette's than anything else. Sometimes I just have to work on my d- 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 diction. Um, as in, she said. Thank you very much. I knew you'd get one of them in there. Uh, and that's what she said. Amen. Y'all are just tag team on this one. That's what she said. Okay. Done. <laughs> That's what she was hoping would not happen. That's what she was hoping to say. I know, I know. Um, actually, there was a, there was one thing that we we're going to go back to this. By the way, we will work to have Ox Baker back on with us in the very near future. Keep your eyes and ears open at beyondringside.com. But believe me, this has been fun. I have enjoyed every minute of it, and I really wish we could have gone longer. So to everybody who locked in for the Beyond, uh, for the Ox Baker, God, I almost said locked into Beyond Ringside. <laughs> Shut up, Wicked. <laughs> He's doing the straight jacket thing behind him. You know, um, I'm going to go ahead and run this one real quick. WashingtonPost.com is reporting that Nancy, uh, Nancy DiNardo, the chairman, the chairwoman of the Connecticut Democrats, has filed a complaint with the Federal Election Commission on Wednesday uh, requesting that Linda McMahon's Senate campaign be investigated for potentially coordinating with WWE on its recent stand-up for WWE campaign. Uh, of course, Linda's campaign manager and WWE have claimed that they're acting independently of each other and have nothing to do with one another. First off, people... Once again, it's a damn television show. Granted, it's sports entertainment. Granted, it's professional wrestling. But the fact of the matter is, the whole scenario that comes into play, that the first thing that pops into my mind is, is that all you got? To the Connecticut Democrats, is that all you got? Are you desperate for um, grasping at straws that that much to the point where you're just going to keep pushing this one issue? Uh, Mark Bowman, come in first. How much longer do you think it will be before they bring up the whole uh, steroid trial from like back, uh, back in the day? Talking about, you know, how Linda's husband, Vince, was involved in the big steroid scandal. Yeah, I remember that quite well. How long do you think before they, the Democrats bring it up then? I'm surprised they hadn't been brought up already, Chase Pearson. I really don't think they want to open that can of worms. This is one of the most popular sports entertainment groups in the world. They really don't want us to come down on them that bad. We already know that the Democrats are a bunch of <clears throat> things I can't say on your show. So let's not piss off, you know, a billion people. There you go. Wicked nemesis. Here's exactly what it is. Democrats and Republicans are the exact same pieces of trash as it is. This is all it amounts to. She did not reconcile with the Illuminati before she came into politics. She went straight in, used her own money, didn't, didn't get any kind of campaign funds. Because everybody right now, all the Democrats that are talking crap about don't wear your WWE shirts are the same ones that were on WWE talking about rock the vote and smack down your vote in 2008. The exact same three politicians were on there. You can look it up. It's all over YouTube. It's become viral right now. They've even shown it on WWE programming, the fact that uh, George George W. Bush, Barack Obama, and Hillary Rodham Clinton, all three made appearances on uh, WWE SmackDown Your Vote. I got something to say about that. Come on in. If Barack Obama ever again uses the Rock's r- phrases, he should be strung up and shot. Well, remember, but you know what? No, I am not. Dwayne Johnson told him he could do that. Dwayne gave him permission. I don't care. He is not the Rock, nor is he anywhere near as popular with a 24% approval rating. He can shut up. Now, taking that one step further, let's go ahead and say this. Uh, remember, the fact of the matter is, uh, John McCain, that's the other one I forgot to mention. I said George W., of course, he did the one for uh, Tribute to the Troops, and I appreciate that. Tremendous on that one. Uh, but it was John McCain who did the SmackDown Your Vote this last time around, and he was also using a Barack uh, – all three used Barack uh, – used uh, Rock lines. Yes, but it does not work when you say Barack. He's made a play on words for his I mean, name. Look, I'm sorry. I'm just a big, avid rock a mark, so yeah. um, I really like the rock. I'm not a big uh, fan of our current president. And if anybody really wants to jump up and down about the fact of the WWE and Linda McMahon's former or current association with it whatsoever, fine. Bring up SmackDown your vote. It did not play party politics. It motivated people in the younger demographic, younger kids, 18 and over, to try to get off their asses, get to the polling places, become educated, and cast a vote in the, you know, cast a vote for the person they felt was best qualified for the public office. So if you're going to jump on one side of the bandwagon, which this is politics, yeah, and it's not wrestling in its direct form, but by the same token, you want to run this storyline, let's run it. Once again, smack down your vote. The Make-A-Wish Foundation. Fact of the matter stands, plain and simple. 
Guys, we know both sides of the coin. They really need to acknowledge both sides of the coin. Wicked, come on in. That's exactly what I was about to say. They need, they do need to acknowledge the fact that they have done a lot of, a lot of positive things. And since they've cleaned it up to PG, besides the fact you can't have a hell in a cell or a cage match without blood, I'm sorry. Yeah. That craps on every match that's come before them. Second of all, what about right after September 11th? Where was the first organized sport event ever in the United States after September 11th? The WWE show. SmackDown. Yeah. It was a World Wrestling Entertainment show, and that's something that a lot, you can't take away. No matter what party you're a part of, you cannot take that away from WWE. When everybody else was like, oh, I'm, uh, I'm afraid that if we run the show, we might just get Bob Vince is going, screw that. You know something? We're not going to be held down. Granted, he everybody lost money on that scenario, but by the same token, Vince McMahon stood up and said, you know something? We're going to have some fun, and we're going to do this business as usual. We're not going to go out of our way to over-glamorize or over-prostitute the damn thing. We're just going to do what we do best, and that's have fun with sports entertainment. Chase. Look, I watched that show. That was probably one of the shows that I really tuned into to make sure I watched. But i got to say, I don't think that any of the terrorists really want to show up at a WWE event with a box cutter. I just really want to see them go after you know Big Show or one of those guys with a box cutter. I just want to see it. It makes my day. Imagine an arena with 18,000 right. screaming fans. Yeah, these are not a bunch of Yankees on a plane. Do that Do that crap in the South. It won't happen. That won't happen in the South. <laughs> End of freaking discussion. How about you do that in real life and not use remote control planes and stuff, and then we'll see if it really happens. <laughs> okay. Look, guys, I'm a little bit right of Genghis Khan, as everybody knows. Um, <laughs> yeah. I spent a little time in the Marine Corps, so don't get me started on these freaking people. You play Genghis Khan, man, World of Warcraft. Warlock's in the house. Oh, God. He got his F, F Mohawk, whatever the hell. I'm, Mohawk grenade! Thank you. <laughs> trying to figure I was doing six things at once, plus trying to read uh, read a show note that I had coming up. Chase? Why don't we get into uh, predictions and stuff for the show, since we've got about uh, 20 minutes before the uh, pay-per-view goes live. I've I got pre- about 17, actually. I predict Mabo in an upper decker. <laughs> <laughs> I predict Mabo in the DQ drive through Even though I did want to talk about Raw, but, you know. Yeah, go ahead. Well, you know, because you even made notes on Raw. I, I know week. everybody should be shocked. I actually watched the show and made notes. I got to tell you, Teddy Long is the worst wannabe pimp I have ever seen in my entire life. That character should just be dropped and kicked out the door. Now, <clears throat> it's a sad attempt to you know pull it off. You know, give me somebody like some Snoop Dogg. Okay, I can deal with that. But Teddy Long as a high player, please. Not player. Whatever he says, I don't care. He can't even say it right. I can't either. I don't care. I'm you know fat white guy. <laughs> Teddy Long is Teddy Long is one of the most underappreciated, under I like Teddy under Long. underrated uh, managers of all time, and I love the fact he went over there and unplugged the uh, laptop and put it up. Now I love Teddy Long as an individual and as a manager, but I cannot stand this character they've got him playing right now. Holla holla! Oh God! Okay, <laughs> at now, least you didn't say holla if you hear me. Smack, SmackDown taking over Raw. I got to give it a trash rating. I really do. I thought it was just BS. It was an awful play. And then not to mention, are you really going to put the Miz over as the captain of Team Raw? Mm, right now, oh, yeah. Somebody please hit him in the head with a sledgehammer. Can okay, I say wicked. something about that really, really quick? Come on, I'm glad because uh, my wife pointed this out. Team Raw, that is the youngest group of Survivor Series or anything like that I've ever seen. I love the fact that every single one of those guys was 33 and below. You look at the guys on SmackDown, Rey Mysterio and Big Show. Veterans. What else did they use? A bunch of young talent. Santino Morello is the oldest one. He's 33. He's the oldest one on the Raw team. That was great them to actually use a bunch of young people. Mark Bowman. Well, he was the young, uh, the oldest. Santino was the oldest one that night. Our truth wasn't allowed in the country because of his past criminal records, and our truth's <laughs> in his late 30s. So I mean, I mean, Eddie. What's re- up? Remember, I texted you. I was like, isn't our truth supposed to be yeah. on there? And they showed a character vignette. They were pre-recorded. Yeah. So you know, he he wasn't allowed in Canada because. He's got a past, and ironically enough, did you guys notice that uh, neither was MVP? Hmm. Neither MVP wasn't on SmackDown because Ch- of his past. Chase Pearson. I'm, just, I'm going back into this tag match thing. I'm sorry, but Cody Rhodes is way too small to be a tag champion, and I'm really sad to see. I'm glad to see some tag action coming back, but it's, you know, I'm. There was a couple high points, but it still seems to me that the tag match was still treated as BS fodder filler. Yeah. And that's sad because I love tag team matches. Wicked Nemesis. Yeah, you're exactly right. And the fact that they might have the Hart Foundation split up makes it even worse because then you've got two two singles wrestlers in McIntyre and in uh, Dash and Cody Rhodes that you've just thrown together instead of having a legitimate tag team. And I do love the new tag team belts. Okay. Mark Bowman. Well, I mean, once again, you know, we, we have that, hey, there might actually be a resurgence in the tag team division, and then they start, te- you know, then they do the whole – 
tease of you know that they're going to break up the heart the heart dynasty the the probably the only real tag team going right now and the whole point is to make you know David Hart Smith look like he's you know going to be the heel turn and what they do they make Tyson end up looking like he was going to do the heel turn and it was just it was poor it was poor timing and everything so that was that whole segment there was just garbage. Well, see, even with the new tag team belts that came out, and you thought for a minute that when they created the new belts with the Spartan heads on them, thank you, uh, you know, what is the name of the bread company? Spartan bread, <laughs> something like that. I don't remember what the hell it was. Roman meal, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Trojan condoms. <laughs> dun dun dun. Okay. Magnum. <clears throat> not quite. However, and that's what she said too. Not quite. Go from there. You know, you thought when they came out with the new belts that they were going to have a little bit more of a resurgence in tag team wrestling. And for all due respect, um, the, the Dude Busters are fun to watch. Um, will they be world tag team champions or undisputed tag champions? I don't know. But by the same token, if they do six, month, six months later, they'll do the same damn thing they did to Crime Time, which to me was one of the most over tag teams that WWE's had in the last five years. May, go ahead, Mabo. And never held the tag team gold. Uh, go from there. I mean, you've got so many different combinations. Would you like to see Santino and Vladimir Kozlov hold the belts? Yeah, personally, I would, because I think it'd be funny as hell. Go ahead, Wicked. Yeah, I see. I totally agree. Once again, that's just throwing two singles uh, together. They're, they have such great tag teams, for real. What if Nexus actually had a tag in Gabriel and Slater? Oh, That'd yeah, be a great way to get, to get Slater over. I mean, and those now that are, the, those are not two singles because they're not established yet. You look at the most of the guys they throw together, they are already established and have won singles titles, you know, respectively. But no, they just it's, it's bull crap. You guys know I'm a huge tag team mark, so I've got to go into this for a second now. I remember being in the, my hometown is Birmingham, Alabama. I remember for years you had Ricky and Robert Gibson, and then you had Ricky Morton, who was also in singles competition at going for the junior heavyweight championship. Um, Robert Gibson going for this um, for the southeastern heavyweight title and the Alabama heavyweight title, but the, um, the the Gibson brothers also held tag team titles. But by the same token, you get Ricky and Robert Ricky uh, Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson in a different area. They might have been friends behind the scenes, but remember they weren't known as a tag team until they got to the mid south or on um, the Texas area, and then they formed the Rock and Roll Express. In that case, it was two single competitors. Editors. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and look at a different coin on this one. Uh, Doc and uh, Terry Gordy, Dr. Death Steve Williams and Terry Bam Bam Gordy, arguably one of the 20 best tag teams of all time. But they were more known for singles wrestling or as tag, te- um, tag team members of a different group like Terry Gordy with the Fabulous Freebirds. So not every circumstance is going to be a case of just throwing somebody together or throw it against the wall and see what sticks, Wick. Uh, yeah, well, see, also back then they actually had wrestlers. Those guys could wrestle that you're talking about. Now you have a bunch of entertainers you're just throwing together because they can't get over. Rock and Roll Express was thrown together because you had a lagging singles wrestler, an older singles wrestler, and a young upstart that they really didn't have anything to do with. So that's what they did. I mean, Will Owens will tell you this story a thousand times. Shout out to Wild Thing Will Owens, yep. Ultimate WA. But he will tell you the story. We've heard a thousand times on the way back and forth to Nashville. That was just, they threw crap on the wall to see if it would stick because they had an older wrestler and younger. And it just happens that way. But those guys were wrestlers that accentuated themselves. Right. You're not talking about two singles wrestlers like, oh, Drew McIntyre and Dash and Cody Rhodes. What the hell do they have in common? What did Dusty Rhodes and Nikita Koloff have in common? The fact that they hated the Four Horsemen. The fact that Bam. was the only thing. Yeah, but, but you that's don't. That's it. But back then, but you know, back then the Four Horsemen. Hey, bro, okay, if we put them together against the NWF, the NWO was still together. Right. I could see it then because you're aligning forces for a common goal. That there's no common goal now. Oh wow, let's putting uh, let's put it on uh, on a metrosexual and somebody that can actually wrestle. Okay, Chase Pearson, come on back in. Next point. Well, guys, you know, I was watching Raw, and as sad as I really see it, because I'm an Attitude Era fan. I gotta say that the Cena Orton versus the Inbred people, probably not a bad match though. You know, I think at the end the Nexus beatdown of Randy Orton, not so much my favorite part. And I have a feeling that tonight we're gonna see John Cena turn. I don't think it's gonna happen tonight. I, I hope so. It, it can't it, happen. The tonight. character building part of it, the part that we used to that we got out of HBK when he had to go through the same kind of stuff, did not is not showing up. Right. In John Cena, I don't see it. Uh, I don't see the expansion of the character base itself. You're right. But I, I, mean, I see agree. Beat, I want to see him beat Wade Barrett down. Then they're doing the storyline properly. Mark Bowman, come on in. I'm a Mark. I know. Um, you know, it's just, I mean, unfortunately, I don't see them turning scene anytime soon, at least not till Mania, if they do it at all. 
because you know he's got the the new purple shirt. So how long do we have till Mania? Uh, about four or five months. I yeah. can't deal with it for another four or five months. That's ridiculous. Nah, I'm just waiting on December to get here so I can go uh, Houston for TLC. Can we have him like put on some kind of mask and a thing and run out and hit him with a two by four or something? Uh, matter of fact, speaking of Mania, Mark, you sent me a text message the other day. Uh, yeah, they're actually doing a WrestleMania kickoff party in Atlanta, November seventh, I believe. Is okay. That, is that what I sent you? I think so. I'd have to pull it up and look, but yeah, um, it's going to be November in Atlanta at the Centennial Park. Uh, I know the Bella Twins, Evan Bourne, and Ricky Steamboat are going to be there. It's going to go from seven. Uh, Ricky, it's, it is going to be Ricky, uh, and it's going to go, I believe, from seven p.m. to ten p.m. Okay. Now, whether it's going to be like a meet and greet, if it's going to be like a little house, like a street party, house party kind of thing, block party, don't know. I hadn't really looked at it, but it's. It's going to happen. It's going to be, I guess, free. Okay. We're going to work on that, actually. I've got, um, I'm working on getting that phone call in um, as soon as I can get the damn promo pack back together that I've been looking for. Uh, Chase, your next note. <clears throat> no, that's, I skipped into it because I already talked about Barack and the, and the Rock thing. So okay. Let's not get me started on that again. We won't. And Wade Barrett, not my favorite character. Okay. He's, I just Personally, I see him as a jack. Then that means he's doing his job. Exactly. No, and yes, but I just can't stand him. I'm sorry. Well, okay. I'm going to go back behind the control board. Y'all have fun with it. Let me go ahead and do this one real quick. To me, the way that Chase is responding to Wade Barrett is similar to the way that people were responding to Robbie E. and Cookie over on TNA Impact when the, child, when the crowd chanted, boring, very loudly, very pronounced, and no matter what they could do, the only thing they could have done was stop the promo and kill the mics on the cameras. The fact of the matter is there are some situations that don't get over. In my book, Wade Barrett's over. He's got the mic skills. He's got the ring talent, the skill set. He is doing the job perfectly. The supporting cast in Nexus, they've got it right for the most part. Everybody has their different assignments. I agree with Wicked. I do believe that um, Gabriel and um, Heath Later. Slater, the one-man rock band, should form a tag team. And even if it is heel, heel, antagonist, antagonist, go after the WWE Undisputed Tag Team Championships. Mark Bowman. Well, I just want to say my favorite moment of the week was uh, Mickey James in her new shorts. Oh my! I'm thick, thick women getting a shot, and that was all over, all over Twitter too. About finally, you no know, thick women actually getting a shot to go out there and wrestle. It, great women's match. There yeah. you go. See, only you would pay attention that she's a thick woman. Personally, I just loved her in her new shorts. Well, see, I'm she got I'm great skinny. I was like, me yes. and skinny person rubbing together might start a fire. To doom doom. I just now wait a minute. Where were you and Rosie on her butt? Where were you and Rosie Lot of Love came on? No, look, there's a difference. <laughs> I don't know who that is. There's there's uh, the chick that uh, almost killed Daphne when she squashed her. In the tryout match. I hate you. <clears throat> yeah, really. We miss Daphne. Yeah, there's Mark, a... you're working on something, aren't you? Wait. No, my hands are above the table. No, I'm talking about next week, Dillweed. Oh, I thought you were talking about we were talking about Daphne and I was working on something. Tell you what, let's go ahead and go for it. We're gonna bypass the final commercial break, folks. We're gonna go straight for it. Uh gonna go ahead and say, do we wanna do shameless plugs first or do we wanna do predictions first? Let's just do predictions. Let's go ahead and go for predictions. Uh, the match that was just added today, Ted DiBiase versus Gold Dust. I'll go ahead and start Wicked Nemesis. Unfortunately, it's going to be DiBiase. Maybo. Yeah, I'm, I'm going DiBiase. Chaser. Gold Dust should beat him down. I'm in full agreement on that one. Right now, the way the storyline is going, I think it should be a mistake happening with Maurice that costs um, Ted DiBiase the match to put Goldust over on the pay-per-view. Um, the way that they have been doing that has been absolutely great. I've enjoyed it. Good build-up, good psychology, good storyline base, and everybody's been carrying their parts out perfectly. I'm going to go with it. The co-Divas champion, Layla, taking on Natalia this evening and for the um, Divas Championship. Go ahead, um, Wicked. Layla. Okay. Mabo. Layla. Chaser. Layla. I want Natalia to go over so bad it's not even funny, but by the same token, you have to look at the way things are going. They've got a great storyline running with the co-champions, uh, flawless. They're still, but by the same token, I think that there should be a setback even for the heels to let the baby face get over for just a second. Chase, can you hear that? Um, sorry, I didn't know if I was just hearing things because it's up and play days, but it happens when I'm running the board too. Uh, go from there. I really, like I said, I'm going to stick by my, my gut instinct and say somehow or another, Natalia gets it tonight. And that's what Eddie said. I hope so. There you go. United States Championship, Daniel Bryan. Excuse me. Daniel Bryan, the U.S. champion, taking on Intercontinental Champion Dolph Ziggler. Wicked. Daniel Bryan, he's going to make him submit. Maybe. Is this a unification match or just a regular match? No, just a match match. Uh, Well, they're trying to push Daniel Bryan. They're giving the whole ladies' man gimmick. I'm going to go Daniel Bryan. Okay, Chase Pearson. 
Sadly enough, Daniel Bryant. Uh, I, for me, it's not sadly enough. Sadly enough would be the push of um, Dolph Ziggler. Not a big fan of either one, so I don't really care. Actually, I appreciate I they both suck. I like them both to a great degree for different reasons. I think that Dolph um, is making the most of a second chance over on the blue brand. He's got the Intercontinental strap back. He's got Vicky Guerrero, which is normally built in heat. And I know if you hear, excuse me, one more time, just like I am, Chase. God, I hate that woman. Not her personally, but just her character. My God, this this excuse me crap. I changed the channel. I hit fast I do forward. Too. I do too. I mean, I'll change the channel and go ahead and come back to it when, if I'm watching it live. Um, by the same token, I really it's a it's a pick 'em for me. Um, I don't know. I really don't see a clean win on this one. I I really can't see a clean win. But if I have to pick right now, I'm going to say Daniel Bryan to continue that push on him. Uh, Team SmackDown, and we'll tell you what, we're going to come back to the bragging rights thing in a second. Kane versus The Undertaker, Buried Alive match. Wicked Nemesis. Taker. Maybo. Well, I would have said Taker up until I found out he's going to take some time off for shoulder surgery. Okay. Uh, I will, so that could be Kane, but I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and say Taker. <laughs> Chaser. What? Kane Taker, buried alive. Kane. Okay. Um, going Kane also. I think the progression of the storyline is well in place if, um, take, if Mark is going to go ahead and take time off for sh- shoulder surgery. And just a shout out to Tag. He agrees with us. There you go. Um, appreciate it. I'm looking at the chat room too right now. So I'm catching the, th- let's see. Tag's predictions were Goldust, Layla, Br- um, Daniel Bryan, and Kane so far. How's it going in there? Uh, let me see. WWE Championship match. Randy Orton versus Wade Barrett. Wicked. Randy Orton. Maybo. Orton. Chaser. Definitely Orton. Um, Cannot put the WWE champion on on what's his goofball. Yes, they can actually. No, 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 no. And not with John Cena there. The timing might be right. Six months before it, and if you're going to run the lead up all the way to um, WrestleMania. What's the name of the next pay per view again? I haven't got a clue. No, there was a play on words in there somewhere. What's the next one? Um, Just for the record, as it stands, I'm going to go ahead and say Randy Orton. By the same token, I see a miscue from John Cena um, because I don't think that Cena is going to go ahead and pull that card right now unless they make this the John Cena ha ha you can't see me heel turn. Um, I would love to see that happen just to see if he can pull it off. But look, they've done crazier things. Remember, they turned Batista heel when he had a damn DVD coming out. So let me get this right. <clears throat> you want John Cena to go heel? Yeah. I don't think he can pull it off. Not well, He did it before. Yeah, but maybe as maybe like corporate champion kind of heel. Not even close to that. He's nowhere in the Rock's No, caliber. I mean, he's not. But his popularity, he's too popular to turn heel that hard. <laughs> Okay. No, no, when, when he was rapping on people, when he did his Vanilla Ice Extreme gimmick, man, he was he's more he was more over then than he is now. And if he were to go back and start doing that, actually start cutting on people and doing what he can, like The Rock did when The Rock turned heel, oh, it is on. That's money. Chase. Well, I gotta come back and say something about this. I think that they're doing damage to Cena's character right now. I don't. I really do. Okay. I don't. I, it's, people are not liking this. Some are and some are I mean, are. it's over as far as, okay, everybody's, you know, oh, my God, how long is he going to take it? But I just really, I don't buy it. Yeah, I mean, I am seeing parallels, and we've mentioned that here on the show, about the parallels between this storyline and the HBK indentured service. I know we're running about a minute and a half out right, um, two minutes right now by my clock. Uh, Team SmackDown, Team Raw, bragging rights match. I'm going to uh, Wicked. I'm going to go ahead and say Team Raw since SmackDown destroyed him this week. There you go. Yeah, Raw, SmackDown basically punked him out. We know how that leads in, in the formulae. Way of pro wrestling. Thank you, Maybo. Take it, Chase. Team SmackDown. I'm going Team Raw. Uh, I think it's going to be a flip flop situation. Uh, let's see. Tag says SmackDown. They need to push. I agree, especially with the advent of the new situations. Guys, we've got two minutes total time. We're going about 15, 20 seconds each. Keep these shameless plugs short. And we'll do the real. Um, we'll do the real version during the 10 o'clock show. Wicked Nemesis. Funny or die at Wicked Nemesis. You can find me at Twitter at Wicked Nemesis. You can find me on Facebook. The Wicked Enoch E N O C H. Mabo. Uh, I'll do the real shameless plugs when we come back, but I'm going to say I'm sitting in the upper deck wishing uh, Wicked Nemesis a happy birthday. Oh! Happy birthday, brother. Mr. MCO Chase Pearson. Hey, you can find me on uh, Facebook at Magic City Online. You can find me on Twitter and all that, too. Wrong break. And you don't get a choice. Okie dokie. That works for me, too. Um, <laughs> that's true because we blew off that other commercial break. I apologize for that. Not, uh, real quick, leg it down. Uh, God, BeyondRingside.com, of course, the official website of yours, uh, your rock and wrestling radio show, Beyond Ringside. Folks, tell you what, we're going to go ahead and cut away. We'll see you back at 10 o'clock. We'll be back right here on Beyond Ringside then. For Mr. MCO Chase Pearson. Peace. For Mark Mabo Bowman. Upper Decker. To the Oracle of Ominous, the birthday boy, Wicked Nemesis, who's blowing on his mohawk like it was a candle. In October. <laughs> this is Fast Eddie Lane saying we'll see you Beyond Ringside. Bye for now.